Hi, I'm Christopher Bedka, a research scientist at NASA's Langley Research Center. I'll be talking to you today about quantifying hailstorm risk and damage using satellites. What we see here is an International Space Station photograph of an intense thunderstorm. So how does hail form in these storms? Well, we have warm, moist air that is ingested into the updraft region of thunderstorms. And so these updrafts rise very quickly and also rotate. And so these rotating intense updraft regions produce unique patterns within cloud tops that we can see from the space station and from satellites. These patterns include these very bumpy uh, cloud tops that you see uh, above the updrafts that are also very cold and have uh, many other unique patterns that we can use to detect these storms. So as this air rises within the updrafts, water droplets form, they freeze, and water continues to accrete on these frozen hail embryos and hail forms in storms. And you can see how menacing these storms can look from the ground. And they produce hail of various uh, sizes and shapes. You see this stereotypical round hailstone here versus a very irregular lobed pattern um, that's much, much clearer than this other hazy uh, white hailstone on the left side there. Regardless of their size and shape, hail is the costliest severe weather hazard for the insurance industry. It generates tens of billions of dollars in losses due to damage to homes, businesses, automobile, agriculture, and infrastructure. And you can see evidence of some of the damage to society that the hail has. Hail that's become so deep that cars can no longer drive through it, damage to solar panels and to clay tiles on roofs, which really takes a tremendous amount of force to, to puncture through those tiles. So from the insurance industry's perspective, they use hail catastrophe models to estimate risk to an insurer's portfolio. And these models are developed with climatologies that define hailstorm frequency and severity. So you would think that with how damaging hail is and how frequently it occurs across the globe, that we'd have these climatologies pretty well figured out. Well, over the places with really good radar network, weather radar networks, like over the U.S. and in parts of Europe, we have a pretty good understanding of the hail climatology. But where we don't necessarily have good radar data, um, we need other data sources to define these climatologies, and that's where satellite data comes in. So we're, in this project, we are applying NASA satellite-based severe storm research to generate these hailstorm climatologies and enable catastrophe model development and hailstorm resilience across the globe. We're also using these climatologies to improve understanding of severe storms, especially in areas without adequate weather radar coverage, which is actually most of the globe. And then also using other types of satellite data to study hailstorm damage signatures that we can use to assess where hail swaths occur and where we need to devote resources to for post-disaster response. So the primary focus of this project is to develop the highest possible resolution and longest duration satellite-derived hailstorm and other severe storm type climatologies. So how do we do this? So one data source that we can use is observations of lightning from geostationary satellites, two of them called GOES-16 and GOES-17. We can see the flashes that lightning produce that we all are familiar with from the ground. We can see that flash emanate through the cloud top from space. We can also use cloud top temperature information. So as I said, as these clouds rise, they become very, very cold and textured, and we can detect those patterns using very sophisticated pattern recognition techniques. We can also use other types of satellites like the NASA TRIM and GPM sensors to identify the actual hailstones within clouds based upon microwave energy. And so in the lower left, we use microwave uh, imager to derive climatologies that extend for long time periods across the globe. And you can see hail hotspots, including the central plains of the US, Argentina, parts of Africa, as well as Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan, and other regions to kind of get an initial global view of where hailstorms occur most frequently. And then we can use this more frequent 
rapidly updating geostationary satellite data to get into the details and map exactly where hailstorms are likely to occur over a given nation, like you're seeing here over South Africa. And then we also are using or demonstrating how to best use high resolution land imaging satellite data to identify severe storm damage. So in the upper right, you see a radar and satellite animation of a intense, what we call a derecho wind and hail storm that did many billions of dollars in damage across Iowa and the rest of the, the Midwest US. Well, you can see what we call a true color satellite image there. So the, the, the right hand middle panel there where you see green shading, you can get some evidence that maybe there's some discontinuities and kind of subtle browning in, in the satellite image. And that was due to the winds and the hail that this storm generates. But we can also use another type of satellite data called synthetic aperture radar that was launched by the European Space Agency that where the damage becomes much, much clearer. So you see these lime green patterns relative to the surrounding deeper green shadings. And we're trying to automate ways of detecting this damage to identify how we can respond to hailstorms after they occur and, and put appropriate resources to help people uh, recover from the storms. So I hope that you enjoyed learning about how we at NASA are using satellite data to study hailstorms, and thank you for your time.